But thank you all. Are you ready to look at some photographs? Yeah. People in this space are really very relaxed. They're in great moods and their minds are open to new ways of thinking. Anyone in this space has just the right mindset to resolve the challenges they face in their life. This is a space where for a very, very long time, people have been thinking great thoughts and then weaving those thoughts together into important contributions to society's wisdom and its treasure. This space has been fine-tuned for creative thinking. Oliver Heath and his team at Oliver Heath Design designed this space and their collaborative efforts soar when they're here and they're working to develop places where people live great lives. So when we think about these places, what do they have in common? What they have in common is that their design supports the kinds of experiences I was mentioning. It turns out there's a connection between design and how you think. And the science of all this is something I've been applying in practice for years. I am a design scientist. Design can help change the world for the better because it can improve our mood. When we're in a more positive mood, we do a lot better job with problem solving, creative thinking, and getting along with others, which, if you think about it, are all things that our world could just use a little tiny bit more of at the moment. The same sort of physical conditions that put us in good moods, well, forever ago, continue to do so today, which really isn't surprising because neuroscientifically, we're really not very much different from our primordial cousins. We respond to places and the objects in them really just as chipmunks do. Chipmunks are another social species that lives by its wits, just as we were living by our wits when our sensory systems develop. Biophilic design applies neuroscience findings, so it recreates today the same sort of situations that forever ago would have improved our mood. And the first aspect of biophilic design that we're gonna talk about today relates to color. Colors are less saturated, but are lighter. Well, they're restful to see, while colors that are um, more saturated and darker, they rev us up. A few colors have some very special uh, functions in our lives. When we see red, well, that gives us a burst of strength, which is generally a good thing, but it also degrades our analytical performance, not usually such a good thing. So the very first thing that you have to do when you leave and you get home is you have to go through your office and take all those red things that you can see from your desk as you work and move them well, to your garage or wherever it is that, that you do things like lift weights. And I just want to mention one other color that has a special effect, and that's green. Green really does, seeing all sorts of different shades of green, really does enhance our creative performance. So we don't just see colors, we see shapes. Curving lines in two and three dimensions, well, they signal comfort to us. While straight lines cue thoughts of efficiency and action. So upholstering a chair for your bedroom, you use a fabric with curving shapes. Uh, laying a long rug down a long hallway that you want people to move on, on brisk, briskly, that rug should feature squares, triangles, all, all those pointy shapes. Another thing that biophilic designers know is at least some of the people sitting in any space need to have a view out over the area from a place where they feel secure. So, you know, when we're sitting in a chair with a tall, sturdy back or high backed booth, we know no lions or tigers or bears or anything that used to scare us a lot can sneak up behind us. And I do have to say it's odd to stand in this spot because I have no idea what's happening back there. I just hope they're not making like bunny ears behind them. I know. Scents also affect your mood and the kind of smells that you might encounter in a meadow on a lovely spring day, well, those are the ones that will improve your cognitive performance and your well-being today. So if you're interested in thinking great thoughts, download a nature soundscape with burbling brooks and things like that from the internet. Being around real things 
real materials, etc., does very, very special things in our heads. It improves our mood as well as our well-being. So when we see something like wood with visible grain, particularly if it has a warm finish, well, that's a great stress buster and performance improver. When um, we see uh, encounter materials like uh, uh, leather and copper that develop a patina over time, well, they are like extra bonus feel-good points in our head. We're really into them. Plants have an almost magical effect on us. Just a couple. When we uh, are in the company of plants, we um, basically all good things happen. Stress levels go down. Our brains work better. We think more creatively. All sorts of uh, good things. But you don't want too many plants. A couple is fine. Too many increase the visual complexity, and that makes you tense. Why does it make you tense? Because long, long ago, it was really hard to spot danger in a visually cluttered scene. Seeing aquariums is almost as great for what goes on in our head as seeing plants, because what it boils down to is humans really have a thing for water. We're into it. We like to see it. You know, if you take, if you have a barren courtyard and you put in a fountain, say this tall, when you look out into that courtyard, even though there's just the fountain in it, that will be as refreshing as looking, mentally refreshing, as looking into a meadow. So what's the moral of this story? When in doubt, add water. So we could talk about uh, biophilic design for quite a while longer, but let's start to focus on some of the other things neuroscientists have learned. First thing, they've learned how design can support different sorts of personalities. So, for example, conscientious among us, they love things to be brightly lit. Those of us who are extroverted, well, uh, we like the really open floor plans, but those are floor plans about which introverts have some very, very serious comments to make. Design-focused neuroscientists have also learned how culture influences our experience of design. And if we think about people from individualistic cultures and collectivist cultures, for example, and compare their responses, you learn that people from individualistic cultures are take much more active role in uh, the form of the spaces in their homes, in, in where they work, et cetera. Uh, they're much more likely to do uh, DIY projects, for example, than people from collectivist cultures. And finally, I want to mention that um, this group has determined that the nonverbal messages that we pull from the world around us, really, they have much more effect on how we think and behave basically than anything else. So you, know, you can take a workplace example. If you go to work and you're looking for uh, uh, signs, you want to know what your boss thinks about you. So you look at the, the space around you nonverbally. What you pull out of that space in terms of what you think your boss thinks about you has more effect on the caliber of your work than the lighting, the acoustics, or almost anything else. It's also important to point out that it's good for the planet because neuroscience-informed design satisfies really very fundamental core human needs we have. And when we encounter it, it makes us feel good. So if we're in a space where we feel good that meets our needs, we don't renovate. When we're using a tool or something and it's pleasant to use all that, we don't buy new. So all that not renovating and not buying new, that means fewer resources are consumed and you know less refuse has to be dealt with, etc. You get the idea. Science can guide us to good choices. So find out more about neuroscience in informed design, and live the life that's best for you and the planet. Be true to your inner chipmunk and become your own design scientist. Thank you.